Hello and welcome to this section of using Kirchhoff's laws with dependent current sources. So I've uh, got a large problem here. It's actually so big that the circuit continues. So this is sort of one circuit here and it's, it is a monster, I'll tell you that. But don't get so worried about it because what you'll find out is when we start solving this guy, uh, you kind of inch your way back all the way up to the front and then you kind of get the answer. So what we have is this circuit here. We've got one source over here, one voltage source. We have two dependent current sources that are given uh, in the course. We've also got the resistors labeled everywhere and we also have some currents pre-labeled. Here's I sub 1 coming out of the source here. We have I sub 2 which is kind of in the last leg over here in the middle part of the circuit and uh, that's really all we have right now. We also have V, v sub uh, 0 over here and the problem is if you're given that V naught which is that voltage way over at the end there is 5 volts then what you want to do is find V sub 1, which is this voltage labeled here in this direction, and V sub G, which is the source voltage. Um, so if, when, you know, if you've never done this before, you just kind of go into lockup a little bit. Um, I'd like to talk briefly about why the circuit's written this way. What you've really got going on here, to be honest with you, the way this is drawn, is kind of an impractical circuit. When I looked at a circuit like this for the first time in an engineering course, I was like, what are they talking about? This makes no sense. You've got, you've got a wire here, but you don't have anything connected here, so how does the current get back to the source? You know, I mean, the current certainly is not coming from this source and then going through this little wire here and then coming back through the same wire. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You don't, you don't have current going through a wire and then coming back through the wire at least in a DC, for AC current, yeah, you have oscillating current back and forth. We'll talk about alternating current later. But this is all DC. This is the battery here and some other sources. You don't have current going through a circuit and then coming back through the same wire. So I, at first I was always confused, like what does this mean when you have segments of circuits connected? What it really and honestly means is it, it's, it's impractical. You don't build circuits like this really. But what it's basically saying is, look, you have a circuit over here, very simple loop. It's got a voltage source, it's got two resistors, and then as a result of this, we don't know what the, the voltage is, but there is some current going around here, and that current we call I sub 1. All right, now totally separate from that, you have this middle section, which is almost like a totally separate circuit. The current that's sort of sourced in the cir circuit is 25 times whatever the value of I1 is. So once you know what I1 is, you know what this current source is doing, and then of course once you have this active current source going on here, then you have currents and voltages everywhere else in the circuit, and then I sub 2 is then defined. Once you know what I sub 2 is, you have a totally separate third part of the circuit that has another dependent current source that's active at the rate of 40 times whatever I sub 2 is, and then once this guy's active, then the rest of the circuit has got current running around. They're connected here really mostly because when you when you learn a little bit more about voltage um, you know I think I've even talked about this voltage is always it's always between two points right it's like the bottom of this battery right is the low side the low voltage side the positive part of this battery if that's a battery is the high part you can think of this bottom part being the bottom part of the mountain and the top part up here being the top part of the mountain Right? So it's always in terms of two points. When you go through a voltage rise like that, it's always like going uphill a mountain or down, downhill from a mountain. So when you have a bunch of different circuits, which is what we really have here, we have this is like a separate circuit, and this is like a separate circuit, but they're connected physically to the negative terminal of this battery. What you've really done is kind of what we call grounded. You've probably heard of that before. Grounded the circuit. In other words, we have 